In this video, we're going to go over how to create a fillable form inside of Word. So the first step before we do absolutely anything, we need to make sure that we have the developer tab enabled at the top of our Word. The way we can do this is by right clicking anywhere on this ribbon, which is this top menu here. Go ahead and right click, click on customize the ribbon. And here we're going to have a lot of options, but the only thing we actually need to do is make sure that this developer main tab here is enabled by clicking on the check mark box and then clicking on OK. Now, if we go to the top of our menu here, we now have a developer tab that will give us all of these options here. Don't get too overwhelmed. While this looks very complicated, it's not as complicated as it seems, and we're only going to be covering the important stuff here which is the form content controls. So on this document, I created a basic table. The left side is going to be our labels. And on the right side is where we're going to actually put our form controls, such as input fields and check mark boxes. In this first section here, we're going to insert a plain text field. And to do that, we have to go up to the form controls section at the top here and click on the plain text content control. And this is going to insert a plain text content and control here and basically this is just a text field we can enter whatever text we want but that's the only thing that we can actually enter in the plain text content control now if we want to adjust the properties we can go up to the properties button here and this is called the content control properties and basically allows us to modify the title the tags and the color and functionality of that form control so here we can obviously adjust the color of the content control we have some locking features in case we don't want the text control to be editable so just some extra functionality to add to your content control if you wanted to the next thing we're going to cover is this check box here and basically I'm going to type in some options here we're going to say option one option two option three just as an example and in order to add check mark boxes you want to place your cursor where you want to insert a check mark and then go up to the control section click on checkbox content control that's going to insert this little check mark box here I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger so here we have a check mark box if we go down to here we can also insert another check mark box and if we go here, we can insert one more. And basically the way these check mark box fields works is if you click on them, it's gonna show that little X that was checked. We can check this one, check this one, and we can uncheck them the same way just by clicking on them. So now they're all unchecked. If we want to adjust the properties, we can go up to the properties button here. Here is where we can modify the check box properties. We can change the checked symbol to be whatever symbol we want. We can choose from here, but we're just gonna leave it as it is. I think the X is fine. Let's go down to the combo box. And if you're wondering what a combo box is, I think it's best if we just go over by showing you. Go ahead and click on the combo box content control right here. And it says choose an item. But if we click on the drop arrow, we see that there isn't actually anything that we can choose from. This is because we have to manually add all of the options to the combo box. So to do that, we have to go to the properties button at the top here. And now we have the drop down list properties. Right here is going to be a list of every option that we have available. We can go ahead and add a new option by clicking the add button. And we can just say option one and the value can be whatever you want we can just leave it as option one for now we can add another option maybe say option two go ahead and add that and if we click ok and if we click this arrow right here we have three options to choose from we have this first option which was the default option we have option one and option two now we can actually add our own option let's say if we don't like either of those options we want to go with option four we can go ahead and just type in option four and that will be what we have selected. So once again, we can just either insert our own option by typing out our own text, or we can choose from one of the options that are already in the drop down the list. We also have a drop down list content form and we can choose that by clicking this icon right here. And this is pretty similar to combo box, but there is one main difference and that is we cannot actually type our own option. So if I go ahead and just add some basic options here, like so, and we click on okay. Now, when we click this drop down link, we can either have this default option one or option two. But if I try to type into this, it's not gonna let me type anything. The main difference between the combo box right above this and this drop down list is that the combo box lets you type in as if it was a text field, whereas the drop down list only lets you select 
from the drop down options. So here in the comment box, if I were to type option four, I could do so. But if I go here, I can't type in anything. I can only select from the drop down here. If we want to remove this default option that it gives us, we just have to highlight it and then click remove on the side here and we click okay and it's automatically going to remove that default option for us now let's go take a look at the date picker so to use the date picker we have to go to the date picker content control button up at the top and this is going to open up a little calendar here where we can pick a specific date so let's say we want to pick september 5th and go ahead and do that and now it's going to show as 9 5 2021 if we go up to the properties here we can change how exactly the date is displayed so by default we're choosing to have it displayed in number form like so but if we want it to be spelled out with the words we could choose this option here click on OK and now it's going to say Sunday September 5th 2021 so again just a lot of different options we can choose from here we can also change the locale and the calendar type if we wanted to the next option here is the picture content option this is going to be represented by this little picture icon here if we go ahead and click on that now we see this little box here so basically when the user clicks on that center image on that box it's going to allow the user to upload a file from their computer and they can choose from any of these four options here but basically when they upload a photo that photo is going to appear in the form as an uploaded photo so if you wanted a form where you wanted them to upload a photo this is what you would use to do that now let's get into the rich text field the rich text field is represented by this first content control here which is called the rich text content control and this is pretty similar to plain text field so we say this is a rich text field and let's go ahead and go to this bottom one and insert a plain text field say this is a plain text field and the reason that i'm doing the plain text field again is because i want to show you the difference between the rich text field and the plain text field because there is one major key difference between these two text fields let's go ahead and add some styling to our text in our text field here so i'm going to select the last half of this text here and we're going to go ahead and change that color let's go with a red bold text here maybe make this bold and italicized if we wanted to but let's go ahead and try doing that on on the plain text field. So if we select this latter half here, and let's go ahead and try adding a color to it. You'll notice that it just changed the entire field to green, but we only selected the latter half of our plain text field. And that is because in a plain text field, we can only apply one format across the entire text field. So unlike the rich text field where we can apply different formatting to anywhere we want in the text field, the plain text field will only accept one singular format across the entire plain text field. So that is the main difference between the rich text field and the plain text field. All right, so now the final step is to actually restrict editing of this Word document so that users can only modify the form and fill out the form and they can't edit anything else. So let's go up to the top under the protect section and click on restrict editing this is going to bring up this little sidebar here and right here we have three different options we can choose from but the one thing we want to focus on is the number two section here and we want to make sure that this is checked and we want to make it so they can only fill in the form by clicking on filling in forms so by enabling this checkbox and selecting the filling in forms selection in the drop down we are saying that when we distribute this word document they cannot modify the form themselves they can only select the options and fill in the options and then if we click on yes start enforcing protection we're going to get a prompt here that allows the user to enter in a password if they want to bypass the form protections we're not going to do this right now so we're just going to click on ok and now if i were to try to edit anything in this form besides these options here it's not going to let me do that it's only going to let me modify what is inside of these form options here so this is how you can only allow people to actually fill out the form but not edit it when you distribute this form out to other people but that's going to cover it for this video if this video helped you out please leave a like and if you want to check out my entire word tutorial i have a link to the video on the screen you can go ahead and check that out if you want but that's going to do it for this video thanks so much for watching and i hope this helped you out